Yes? Okay. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming to our third annual Autism Awareness event. My name is Dara Berger, and I'm your host for this evening's event. On behalf of NAA New York Metro Chapter, I would first like to take a moment to thank all the council members for allowing us to gather on the steps of City Hall. And I would also like to thank William Lopez of the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene for coming out, and he would like to say a few words and address you all. So. Here we go. And I will clip it for you if you want me to make what? There you go. Then you okay. got your hands. I'm, I'm on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation for being here this evening. On behalf of the Mayor Bloomberg and my Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Commissioner Tom Farley and Dr. Adam Capardi, who is our Executive Deputy Commissioner for Mental Hygiene, I bring you greetings and best wishes on this very important event on behalf of Autism and Autism Awareness Month that we're all celebrating and recognizing. The city has been very supportive over the years in autism. Our department particularly has had contracts with a number of providers who provide a, a multitude of, of services to the community. And very recently, the city council has approved a, an initiative called the 1 in 150 initiative, where we have 25 providers receiving support over the last three years in the field of parent education and training and in wraparound services. We know it's a small step in the right direction, but we do expect to continue support as we move forward and groups like yours and others who have been very, very strong and vocal in advocating for the needs of the community, we feel very strongly that we're doing the right thing and we're moving in that direction. And we hope together, collaboratively, we can do even more. So on behalf of the city and the mayor, and the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. Thank you. So we have a special program for you tonight. First, you will hear from parents who will speak about the challenges of raising a child on the spectrum. I will be one of those parents. Then you will hear from the president of NAA New York Metro Chapter, and she will talk about the enormity of the problem. She will talk a little bit about NAA, and she will give out our Spirit of Hope Award. And then parents who have had success will tell their stories of fighting back and winning. Lastly, our Advocacy Committee Chair will talk a little bit about what we can all do to make a difference by children affected by autism, and he will also read a poem written by a boy who has autism. I unfortunately know all too well what it is like to be affected by autism. I have a six and a half year old boy on the spectrum. His biggest thorn is that he still cannot speak. My husband and I have done so many things, like so many of you, to try to help him. He has made a lot of progress, but he still has a way to go. I have never experienced the kind of heartbreak that I've had these last four years with my son. My husband and I always say to each other that the pain is beyond measure. My son is the most courageous little boy that I have ever met in my life. He is living what I always say is my worst nightmare to be fully cognitively aware and not be able to communicate with the people around you. He is such a happy little boy despite all his daily challenges he encounters. He is very friendly and always hugging everyone around him, including his teachers and therapists at school. It seems that he tries to make the best of every moment every day. And if that's not courage, then I don't know what courage is. Autism affects me every minute of every day. I rarely get a reprieve from it. I spend most of my time fighting to try to get him better, whether it's researching new interventions, both medical and therapeutic, fighting the legal system to get him what he needs and what he deserves, or speaking with his therapist and thinking of ways to improve everything that is currently being done. And when I finally do get a few moments to reprieve, such as going to the gym, I get smacked really hard in the face when I come back home to autism. I cannot tell you how many times I've been out and I come home and I hear him through the door, humming around the room, bouncing off the walls, making lots of noise. And I look at the doorknob and I don't want to turn it and go in. I just want to run, run anywhere from here. But I don't run because I don't run from anything. My son needs me. 
So I go inside and then I have to talk myself down from the guilty feelings about not wanting to be around autism sometimes. I tell myself over and over that I'm human and I have my limits and that my feelings are perfectly normal. So that is a few minute snapshot of how complex and far reaching autism can be every day. And unfortunately, that moment I just described is only one among so many I experience over and over, just like it every day. Another moment I experience over and over is the desire to get my son better. Like many parents, we spend countless hours talking about what's working, what's not working, what is still left to try, and what do we do next tomorrow. I would give up every worldly possession tomorrow, I would swim with sharks, and I would gladly give my right arm if you told me it would get my son better. I think like many parents, the only question would be, can you take it now? I don't mind about my own suffering the way I do about my son's. I'm 40 years old and I had a whole life before autism. My son is missing his whole life every day and I find that unbearable to watch. I also now have a 13 month old daughter who will also have to watch all of this. I know in my heart it will make her a better person for it anyway. I will never stop trying for Dylan until I take my last breath. I will keep trying to recover him or just make his life better in any way that I can because I love him and he is my son. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce a father many of you know from his very helpful books, Cutting Edge Therapies for Autism and 1001 Tips for Parents of Autistic Boys. He will talk about what it's like to be a single dad raising a 12-year-old on the spectrum. Please welcome Ken Siri.